Hello and in this video we'll be looking at Firebase security rules and everything you need to know about them. So we recently created this set of rules for our messaging app. It's quite simple but I didn't go into detail about the actual language, the actual security language. So we can write this basic thing that you'll have in your default sometimes, match documents equals star star. This will mean that we can access every single document inside the database, essentially. And we can say allow read and write. So we'll have the most non-secure application possible. Anyone can do anything without any conditions. We can add a basic condition, for example, if false. This will make the application fully secure, but unusable because a person can't read or write in this case. We can say this, allow get, allow list, so we'll have much more than read and write, but all these things follow either under read or under write. So allow create allows you to create documents, allow update allows you to update documents, and finally allow delete allows you to delete documents. And for example, allow get and allow list, both are part of allow read. So this is essentially the same thing. And allow create, allow update and allow delete are essentially all allow write. You can either write allow write fully or write it in separate parts. So once again, we'll delete this. And we'll be looking at how to direct you through the database. Here we're saying that Equal star star means that we can ha have access to everything under the documents and inside it, meaning in this case, everything in the database. Now we can have the messages collection and we can look at a specific uh, message or specific document by simply using its UID and setting a set of rules. But more usually you'll be using the wildcard. So we can have this variable message ID and it will have a different variable for any given uh, document. By default, if you didn't say allow for something, it is not allowed. So currently creating and uh, deleting documents is not allowed because we haven't specified it. For this, we can have a condition if requested auth isn't null. Basically, a user can update something if he is logged in. Otherwise, he cannot update anything. A simple trick that you'll be using quite often. Also, we can have functions. Functions, just like in JavaScript, are used to reuse code. So we can have this function of is signed in, and it can return this. So we can say return, and simply paste this in here. And now, at the top, we can say allow update if is signed in. And now you can use this is signed in in multiple places. We can have another match. Say we have an app with different users and a users a user collection. In this collection, we'll once again use the wildcard, so user ID for each individual user. And we can say allow read if the user is signed in. So a person can read another user data if he is signed in. So as you can, this is the use of functions. And also we'll have a different condition for allow write, which is going to be if is owner. So basically, this means that a person can only change information about his account, not about anyone else's account. We'll now be creating the is owner function. So just like with the is signed in function, we can create it, give it a name, but here it will actually have a parameter of user ID, because we'll actually have to pass some arguments inside of it. We'll be returning some information as usual. And we can say request dot auth dot uid equals user dot uid uh, equals user id, which will essentially mean that only the user that is logged in can change his own account information, and he can't change anyone else's account information. Otherwise, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you.